Hello everybody, I hope you are having a fantastic day. I thought I would take a couple of minutes to show you the new menu system in User Spice 5.5 Ultra Menu. Now, Ultra Menu is designed to replace the Classic Menu and to take care of a lot of its downsides. The old Classic Menu only allowed uh, one menu total with one drop down per section. Uh, just not a lot of flexibility in it. And so we addressed a lot of those things with Ultra Menu. So let's jump into Ultra Menu and take a look. Uh, you'll see that in here you can have multiple menus and uh, we have two by default. This is the home page menu and then the dashboard has its own separate menu. You'll see that you can't actually delete either of these two, but you could delete any future menus that you make. So we'll click on the main menu and um, the first thing you may wanna do is add an item. So let's go ahead and hit the add item button and we're gonna give it a label. This is what you'll see on the uh, menu itself. Now see that there is also this thing down the bottom, I'll let you read this, where you can add your own multi-language keys. So for instance, all of these things are translated into multiple languages on the front end. And so uh, you can actually add your little language key between these curly braces and it will translate. But for now, we're just gonna uh, call one support. So I wanna take a moment to explain the permissions here. Uh, as you can see, you need to have at least one of them checked or you won't be able to save it. Uh, public means that this is if you're logged out. So in other words, anybody who is not logged in uh, would be able to see this link if this is checked. Now, if you want the link to be shown whether you're logged in or not, then you can also check another permission or multiple permissions. Every single permission that you add to user spice will show up in here. And so uh, we have administrator and user. So this basically Basically means that this thing will be visible to everyone. Uh, LI class allows you to add a class to the LI tag in the menu. If you were to view the source of this page, you would see that there's LI tags in uh, around these things, and you can add a class to it called, you know, my highlighter, and you can make your own custom highlight or whatever you want to do. Uh, you can change the font color, whatever you want to do there. Um, then we have an icon class, which is probably something you're going to use. It uses the Font Awesome 4.7 or 6 uh, icon. So we're just going to go ahead and give it a class of a book. And then we're going to say that this is a link and we're just going to send it to index.php. And uh, the A class, if you want to target specifically the link itself, you can do that. Um, you can choose if it's going to open in itself or a blank page or a parent. Uh, so you have some options for what you want to target there with standard HTML uh, target attributes there. And you can choose if this is going to be a parent item or uh, a drop down item. We'll get to that later. And of course, you can disable it. So we're going to hit save. And then um, when we view the home page over here, you can see that now we have a support button and you click that and it just went to index.php. So the next thing I want to cover is drop downs and I'm going to come over here to this same menu item and I'm going to say uh, that instead of it being a link, it's going to be a drop down. So we're going to hit save. And now um, if we come back to the home page, you'll see that this is a drop down, but there's nothing really below it. So you don't get the carrot or anything like that. It just doesn't go anywhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to one of the coolest features about this thing is this um, mini map. And what this allows you to do is to click this and you can manage whatever you click just at a glance. So I've clicked this and now I'm going to add a sub item to this. So I'm going to come in here and we'll just call it item one. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing. Just make it available to everyone. We'll give it a class of a rocket and we don't really need it to go anywhere. So we're just gonna hit the pound symbol and we're gonna say that it is a parent, its parent is uh, support. Now, if we wanted to, we could move this around, but we're just gonna say that the parent is support. So now when I do this and I come back here to the home page, all of a sudden my little carrot showed up and I have the ability to do this drop down. Now, of course, we can come back to the mini map, hit support and add another item. And we're gonna just be real creative here, call it item two and we'll make it available to everyone and we'll give it an icon class of a wrench and we'll make it a link to nowhere and we'll hit save. Um, and then now when I come back here, you'll see that we have two items under here, very slick. So now what I can do is I can come back here to the support thing and I can actually use the drag and drop features to reorder these items and they save automatically. So if I come over here and hit refresh, then now item two is above item one. 
And that feature basically works anywhere in here. So I can take this entire support tab and drag it down here if I want to, and then it will reorder here and support will be over on the right. Now, a few other things you might want to add are things like separators on your drop downs. As, as they get longer, you may want to add a separator. So we're going to add an item uh, right here and we're going to, it doesn't really matter what we call it because you're not going to see it, but we're going to call it separator. And the reason why I recommend doing this, uh, separator, uh, the reason why I recommend doing this is to make it easier to see in the UI that you have a separator there. And we're just going to make it a type of separator and save it. And then we're going to come back to support and we're going to put that separator between these two items. Now, when I refresh the page, I have a separator between the two items. Okay, so as you can see, I added a few more links here to the dashboard and uh, we still have our original item two and item one and I added these other ones over here. Uh, so if we come back here and let's just say that I wanted to take uh, this user manager one and add it under support, uh, what I would do is come over here to the management and that's right here. And uh, I would come over here and I would take this one uh, user manager, I would edit it and then I would come to the parent and I would add it under support. And now you'll see that when I click it, support has user manager. Now we're going to take one more look at permissions. As you can see that when you go to these two menus, you don't actually see item three. And that's because uh, when we come over here to management and we click on item three, you can see that this is for public, which means that the only way that's gonna show is if you actually log out. So uh, I'll just go ahead and log out. And now that I've logged out, you can see that item three is visible under here. If I wanted item three to be visible to all users, I would just click this button here and save it. And then now all of a sudden item three would be visible uh, to all users because every single user has the user permission. So let's go ahead and do one more permission based thing. We're going to add an item here and we'll call it dashboard uh, dashboard. And we will say that we only want it to be available to administrators and we'll give it an icon class of FA FA desktop and we'll make it a link to users admin.php and we'll go ahead and save it and now on the home page we have a dashboard link and it will take us to our dashboard okay let's get a little bit more advanced uh you'll see that every menu here has a menu type and as i click this you can see that the menu type can be horizontal vertical or accordion now sometimes it may not make sense like it may just not work to have your menu here at the top in uh, accordion or something like that so i'm going to show you a little bit of custom stuff that we can do with it so we're going to come back here to the menu manager and you're going to see that there's this code usage button and it gives you a nice little uh, snippet of how to use this and so we're going to start using the menu programmatically and i'm just going to go ahead and copy all of this and we will go to the code editor. Now I've made a page called demo.php and we're gonna go ahead and drop this in here. And so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna choose which menu you wanna play with. And so in our case, each of these menus has an ID. Uh, so we're gonna grab menu ID one, which is the simplest one. So all you have to do to um, display a menu simply is to do new menu with the ID and then menu display, but we want to get a little bit more advanced. So we're going to get rid of that and we're going to just do this. And so we are going to take this uh, example here and you're going to see that we have the ability to change some things about it on the fly as we display it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, save it and I'm going to refresh this page and we're going to come down here to demo.php. And you'll see that now we have this menu in a vertical fashion. So I'm actually gonna add a little bit of space to the top here so it looks a little bit better. Um, it's not gonna look great, but I'm just gonna add some space here so you can see that that's not actually part of this one. So I've added this now here. We have this um, vertical menu, which isn't my favorite kind of menu. And you can see here, it looks kind of weird. That, And that's because it's gonna take up all the space that you give it. So what you can actually do is come in here and give this something like a column three or something along those lines and it'll kind of suck in and be a little bit more practical so you'll want to use some responsive classes there now the drop down menu is okay um, not really my favorite style but it is there and there might be times when it makes sense to use it 
Now, as opposed to the vertical layout, I tend to prefer the accordion layout. And again, you'll want to make your div responsive and you want to make your div uh, well designed to handle what we're going to do here. But I'm just going to give you the quick and dirty example. So I'm going to set this to a column two and I've changed the layout from vertical to accordion. And we're going to come back here and we're going to refresh this page. And you'll see now that we have um, an accordion style menu where each of these things kind of stays in one place. It doesn't keep expanding out the side. And uh, so I think that's a little bit cleaner. Now, again, I don't love drop downs in these, but it is a nice way that you can actually just make a quick menu and drop it anywhere you want on the page. So we're going to go ahead and play around with the branding, which is the logo area on this menu. I actually have a conflict with this one um, on the template. So I'm just going to give it a style equals, and then we're just going to say color. Or we'll just do red. Let's do something completely different. Uh, but as you can see, when I come in here and refresh the page, you'll see that we are able to basically put any kind of... Um, branding HTML we want. So we can basically put any kind of HTML in here. You can do links to logos and all kinds of stuff like that. I can paste a link to Google and change this to blue if I want. And um, you know, when you come over here to the page, you'll get a new uh, menu link there and it clicks to Google and we've gone to google.com. Now, one of my favorite things about the new ultra menu system is the ability to add hooks to the menu. And what that means is that either a plugin or you on your own can add uh, HTML and PHP snippets to the menu and you can do some really powerful things. So we're going to start off by using some existing code that already happens to sit in user spice and then I'll make one from scratch. Uh, we're going to go ahead and call this plugins and we're going to just make it accessible to everyone because it doesn't really matter and we'll give it a class of fa fa wrench and then what we're going to do is instead of uh, having a type of link we're going to give it a type of a snippet and then it's going to be a drop down here and you can see that um, we've got one in user c includes menu hooks plugins.php and it tells you to put them there so that's where i put my snippet and we're going to save it and now when i go to my menu on the home page you can see that all my plugins are just like up here on the thing, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so that's really not the way that we would normally use it. But you can see that it just took every single plugin and allowed it to uh, be in the menu. So a better way to use something like that would actually be to come back here to the main menu. We're going to make a new item and we're going to call this one plugins. And then we'll do the same thing and we're going to uh, forget the icon class. We'll just give it a type of a drop down and we're going to save it. And then we're going to come over here to the other plugins that is the hook. And that would be this one here. And we're going to have that be under the parent of plugins. And now you'll see when I save this and I refresh the page, now all my plugins are down here. So that's kind of sweet, but um, you know, that's one that was already made for us. Let's go ahead and make one from scratch. All right, so let's say that you use some kind of virtual currency or something like that on your system and you wanna be able to see the account balance. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the user C folder and if you don't have one, go ahead and make a folder called hooks and inside of that make a folder called menu and we're gonna make a new file called coins.php and then I'm just gonna put XXX in it uh, so that we can make sure that it shows up. Uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new item to the menu and we're gonna not make it public. We're gonna make it just for all the logged in users and we're gonna call it account balance and we don't need to give it an icon or anything like that. And we're gonna give it a type of snippet. And now um, the snippet menu shows up and it's telling us that it's gonna look for those snippets. So you can come over here and you can select your coins.php file and save it. Now when you go to your homepage, you'll see that you have the XXX right there. Now normally we would do something dynamic like uh, user data, coins. Um, I don't have that set up in the database. So we're just going to go ahead and make a little um, random number thing. So let's give it a span and we will make the uh, color, let's see, style color yellow, just, you know, to make it look coinish. And then we will do uh, rand Something like that. I mean, we're not trying to get too fancy here, but you'll see when we refresh the page, you'll see that you have uh, 
8,924 coins. And so we can even get rid of that space there, which you can't see off screen, but we'll get rid of that little space there. You'll see every time you refresh, refresh the page, you get a new number of coins that you have. So anyway, it's uh, nothing too complicated there, but you can see that you can start doing all kinds of cool stuff because you can add both HTML and PHP in your menu just in little snippets. Now I want to say that I am building this on version 5.5.6 and there will continually be new features coming out. Things like exporting menus and importing menus and cloning menus and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, but there's still a lot you can do right now and so I want to show you a few more advanced features. Uh, this is menu ID 2 that we're looking at here. This is the typical one that's on the dashboard and when I come to the home page you'll see that this is menu ID 1. A complete completely different menu. So um, one of the things you may decide that you want to do is to show menu ID 2 somewhere else. So all you have to do is do menu override equals 2 and now on this particular page uh, the second menu will show up there instead of the first one. But if I were to come over here to demo.php you'll notice that we're still loading the first one so you can actually override uh, which menu is shown on any particular page without editing anything in the database itself one of the other really cool things that comes along with that is uh, user c includes uh, dashboard overrides and uh, as you can see in here we have uh, the first thing you want to see is that we are calling that menu override here so let's say that you decided hey managing two menus is way too complicated for me i want to show only the first menu uh, and i want that to be my dashboard menu so now when you come to the dashboard you'll see that you're seeing the same front end menu so this would allow you to have one menu on the whole site and you wouldn't even be using menu two the next thing you want to do um, and this is instead it really can be an addition but you can have a sidebar menu if you remember the old one that we had in user spice you can come in here and say hey i want to see a sidebar menu instead of the top menu or in addition to the top menu and all of a sudden and I need to put a, a li tag around that but um you can use this one over here and have a nice little sidebar menu and if you wanted to you come back over here and make this one menu two and now the traditional one will show up over here you've got your little accordion you got to work on that little padding a little bit but um you get the idea uh, now what you can also do is say that I don't want to see the top menu at all So I'm going to come in here to hide top navigation and I'm going to say true and now um, I'm going to come in here and now the top menu is gone. That's probably the ideal way to use this to where you don't get that snapping around you can get rid of the top menu just show the side menu and you get something that's a lot closer to the more traditional uh, user spice system Another very new feature we have is uh, something that will get some tweaks, but we have this highlight active links feature where you can come over here and uh, you'll need to clear your cache before you actually see it, but you can save that. And then now um, when you're on the dashboard, that link will be highlighted. Uh, when you're in Spice Shaker, that one will be highlighted. Again, little bits of tweaks coming to that, but uh, that feature has been implemented. A few other quick notes. Uh, if you click your actual menu link at the top here, you can set things like your Z index. I recommend setting them five apart. Uh, so if you have menus at 50 and 55, I recommend you create a new one at 60 or at 45 or something like that. Uh, whatever one has the higher index will be on top should they ever have to overlap. But you want to have at least two in between them. So I'm recommending five. That just allows your drop downs to all work. Uh, the next thing you can do is you can come in here to this branding HTML and you can set your own branding HTML. So if you want to call the page something different, if you want to use a different logo, if you want to change the colors and stuff like that, you can actually change things in here. Uh, because this is used in many pages, many folders deep, we have this little root snippet here. So any links you do, just make sure you do them from the root of your project. So that is the very basics of Ultra Menu. There's a lot more coming and we're going to continue making this product better and better. But I hope you find it helpful. I hope that you find the ability to add snippets and put menus anywhere and do all kinds of cool stuff helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if there's any features you'd like to see added. And if you have any questions, we have a Discord that I'll link to in the description also. And uh, hey, thanks for using User Spice and thanks for watching. Have a great day.